Let's return to the question the same or not the same, but now let's ask that question for groups of atoms within a molecule. Before we were comparing two different molecular structures, trying to decide if they were homomers or isomers. Now we want to look at groups of atoms within a molecule to decide whether they're stereochemically equivalent or not. Whether the stereochemical environment in one place is the same as the stereochemical environment in another place within one molecule. These are known as topic relationships. The word topic means place. And we've actually already addressed this question. For example, at the beginning of the webcast on stereochemistry, we talked about 3-methylvalene. The three different methyl groups in 3-methylvalene we found to be stereochemically equivalent. We said they were. And we also concluded that in the case of valine, the two different methyl groups, we concluded, for reasons that we'll learn about in the next webcast, that they were stereochemically not equivalent. So, let's actually look at this question a little bit more deeply because it's not quite as simple as the same or not the same. It turns out that how we interrogate a molecule is going to make the difference as to whether or not groups of atoms are the same or not the same. Can they be distinguished or not? Depends on how we ask that question. Let's take a look at this achiral molecule, pentanoic acid. Those two hydrogen atoms have the same connectivity to that carbon atom, and we could ask the question, are the two hydrogen atoms the same or not the same? Well, that's going to depend on whether we ask that question by using a chiral probe, such as an enzyme active site. An enzyme is made of chiral amino acids, and an enzyme's active site is chiral. And a chiral probe would be able to distinguish those hydrogen atoms as being different. Or, in fact, if you took your left hand, and wrapped that, your left hand around that molecule, say with your thumb on the carboxylic acid, your fingers in your left hand would see those hydrogen atoms as different than the fingers in your right hand if you pro put the molecule in the same orientation with the thumb next to the carboxylic acid. So those are chiral probes, and they would distinguish those two hydrogen atoms. If we used an achiral probe, like an aqueous solution, which is made up of achiral water molecules, or if we used an NMR spectrometer, which is another achiral probe, those two hydrogen atoms would not be able to be distinguished. So, to summarize this, basically a stereochemically equivalent set of uh, atoms are, going to able to, are, are never going to be able to be distinguished, whether we're probing it with a chiral or an achiral object, or achiral or achiral or achiral probe whereas stereochemically non-equivalent groups of atoms may be able to be distinguished. And the word may needs a little bit more clarification, which we can find in the next slide. So what we're going to be able to do is to classify stereochemical environments, not just as whether they're equivalent or not equivalent, but just like in the case of comparing two different molecules, we could go beyond saying whether they were homomers or isomers if we knew they were isomers, we could decide whether they were enantiomers, diastereomers, or constitutionally uh, constitutional isomers. And in the case of stereochemical environments, we can make many of the same distinctions. Are those stereochemical environments homotopic, enantiotopic, diastereotopic, or constitutionally heterotopic? And the reason this matters is because we can then know whether we could distinguish stereochemical environments and it depends on whether we're probing, interrogating that structure with a chiral or an achiral probe. So for example, homotopic environments, they can never be distinguished whether we're using a chiral or an achiral probe. However, in antiotopic environments, can't be distinguished if we're using an achiral probe like an aqueous solution or an NMR spectrometer, but they could be distinguished if that if those uh, groups were being probed by a chiral source, say putting a molecule in an enzyme active site. In the case of diastereotopic and constitutionally heterotopic groups, those stereochemical environments are always distinguishable whether we're using a chiral or an achiral probe. So let's just take a look at a, uh, an example, a few examples. First, let's imagine that we're trying to distinguish groups of atoms according to whether according to uh, in, uh, or interrogating that molecule using a chiral object. In the case of this diacid, those two hydrogens are homotopic. We'll learn that in the next webcast. And so we would not be able to distinguish 
under uh, this set of conditions, actually under any set of conditions, uh, a distinction between those two hydrogen atoms. We'd never be able to distinguish them in any way. However, the two hydrogen atoms in pentanoic acid are an antiotopic, and so with a chiral probe, we would be able to distinguish those. However, in that pentanoic acid, those enantiotopic hydrogens would not be able to be distinguished if we're using an achiral probe to in interrogate the molecule. Here's a pair of hydrogen atoms that we'll learn as being diastereotopic, and those hydrogens would be able to be distinguished with a chiral or an achiral probe. And here's a, a group of hydrogen atoms, a pair of hydrogen atoms, that we can see are distinguishable because they have different constitution. The one on the right is close to this methyl group. The one on the left is close to this carboxylic acid. They're constitutionally different, and so they're distinguishable by a chiral or an achiral probe.